The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff. We are glad that you are still watching us. This is NTV People's Parliament the only platform that gives Ugandans the opportunity to have their say on issues that affect their everyday life. Tonight, we are having yet another important topic that touches all Ugandans, the creation of more counties. Do we need new constituencies? Is that our country's priority? Honorable members, you're welcome to NTV People's Parliament. As you are aware, Parliament has already approved uh, uh, 43 counties that will turn into constituencies and definitely have more new 44 members of Parliament and another 19 municipalities. But there are also many districts that have been, uh, that are in Parliament and yet to be approved. This means that in the 10th Parliament, we could have more than 450 MPs up from 385, further pushing up the cost of public administration. So we are asking, do we need more constituencies? Does Uganda need more constituencies at this particular time? The few questions we need to ask ourselves, the first one is one, do we actually need more districts? Then secondly, do we have the districts that we have currently, are they well funded? Are they functional enough in order for us to facilitate to have others? Then what are the implications? And what is the timing of the creation of these districts? I think for me, the first question is that we don't actually need any more districts because the current districts that we have are not well funded. We all know that uh, the service delivery within our country is still poor. Service delivery in most of the countries, in most of the areas is still very weak. And we know that whenever a, a new district is created, it has to share its staff, you know, revenue base and, the, you know, the relevant art transfers with the, you know, um, existing district. Then in the process, you're going to realize that um, in case you had like five, uh, five staff in a mother district and then the district is being split up, these staff in most cases are going to be uh, shared with the other district. And again, th the cycle more or less continues. But we also know that a district does not actually come in isolation. It does come with relevant technocrats, with RDCs, with our chief administrative officers. The, the, minister, in charge, the, the yeah. minister of local government gave parliament information that to kickstart a new district, mm -hmm. they need about 50 billion shillings. Exactly. Yeah. Again, we need to ask ourselves why this 50 billion shillings is going to come from. Is our budget, are our earnings as a country increasing? Because you cannot increase when your, your, your earnings are very, very low. But again, like I said, you realize that any particular district is also going to increase the numbers of members of parliament. Currently, the house, the, 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 the member, the, 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 the parliament is supposed, or it was designed for only 80 members. Now, we are going to have over 400 members of parliament sitting in a house that was meant for only 80 people. What type of members are these, and how are they going to be able to squeeze themselves? And again, w when you look at the members of parliament, the first thing that they do when they come is increasing the enrollment. We had to buy for them vehicles, we had to buy for them iPads, despite the fact that some of them actually already had their own you know, iPad. But we had to continue buying for them all these other things. And who does f um, uh, fund against the taxpayer? We may end up borrowing a roughly 1.4 trillion shillings. You know, that is to support you know, m uh, new districts, which again, are we going to get value for money for the districts? That's one of the things that we need to ask ourselves. Mm. Uh, but again, um, if I'm to conclude, we need to understand that the whole issue of creating new districts, it's all about patronage, it's all about job creation and electoral politics. We need to look at the timing of the creation of these districts. When are these districts in most cases created? Are they created at such a time when elections are coming, uh, you know, coming by? And are we saying that Ugandans are only triggered to demand for districts during the time of elections? Because the first district that we had that was in 1996, then we had in 2001, or 2006, and 
um, again, we are seeing ourselves in 2015, you realize that districts in most cases are coming up at such a time when we are approaching elections. And according to um, a research that was done by a court, it was very clear that in areas where districts were actually given, you realize that uh, so the, the incumbent, the president, was able to obtain substantial electoral advantages in areas where these new districts were created. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in 1996... Um, they appreciate the president for the district. Obviously, of course, and, and we know the passion that people have for districts. It mm -hmm. is obvious you give me a district, I'm going to be very passionate and I'm going to give you the vote. I mean, if, if a person like an MP wants to, you know, strangle himself on the floor of parliament, this actually goes ahead to show you the importance as to, you know, the importance people will actually put on districts. Now, I wanted to give the statistics. Briefly, um, in 1996, the president was able to get 89.2% uh, in areas where districts had been created. In 2001, the president was able to get around 72.5% in the areas where new districts had been created. And then 73.6, uh, that was in 2006, in the areas where, again, new districts were created. But again, we need to ask ourselves, is the whole issue of creating new districts new? Is it something that is only coming up in Uganda? No, this is something that has cut across you know, African countries. Um, in, uh, I think, 1999, when you look at um, uh, Chad, um, between 14 to 28 districts were created. That was two years before uh, President Idris Dabi was coming to, well, was before elections. Then in Malawi 19, uh, in 1998, a year before re-election, uh, President Bakili Muluzi also ended up creating uh, new districts. So the whole issue of creating new districts has never really been that it is something that people are demanding for, but it's all aimed at the patronage system, it's aimed at uh, politicking, and obviously it is not necessarily demanded for. It goes back to entrench the whole uh, uh, set the score of the current regime mm -hmm. and and, and again, when you look at the whole you know, amount of money that we're spending in, when it comes to districts, it's, it's, it is a challenge because as a country, we do not have that money. So, Madam Speaker, my submission is that as a country, we do not need new districts based on the various, uh, you know, on my submissions. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Honorable Prukor, Honorable Sister has spoken about the new district. What about the new counties? Do we need them? The question is, who, who are the beneficiaries? Who are the losers? <laughs> So the creation of new constituencies for the 10th parliament, and I've just posed that question, who are the beneficiaries, who are the losers, what are the implications, what's the way forward for the concerned citizens? We go. 38 constituents were approved by finance. Now when it went to cabinet, it was added to 39. By the time they came to parliament, oh, there was an outcry for these people who were shedding tears. <laughs> <laughs> for constituencies, MPs were shedding real tears. Because for them, I'm under pressure on this corner of the constituency. There is somebody who really wants to take me away. I wish they could cut this co county so that I concentrate on these two, three sub-counties, and the new person takes that. And then here is um, Anite Honorable, trying to take on Babadiri, the, the, the woman MP for Koboko. She's so much on ground, that uh, person with disabilities you can't remove her. And yet she's the one who knelt, uh, Anita knelt and delivered the sole candidature. What do you do? So the president has to, cre to create a clear sky for Anita by just cutting, <laughs> okay, cutting the, the Koboku constituency. And even now, adding even a, a municipality. Ah, she's now smiling. She will be in the next 10th parliament. So rewarding. So, so when I say who are the beneficiaries, Omoro County, where Olanya comes from, under pressure. If you see where they are creating districts, Amuria, they are cutting it just to uh, cater for JJ Odong and maybe Muse Chweru because they are going at each other. So, so you, you see there the, the, the are calculations that have gone into this creation of constituencies. So, so it, is it, it is not... Honorable Prokol, I'll the, come the, the, the justification is to... To, to bring services near Now, people. let's double-click about services. <laughs> because a county is no longer an administrative unit. Do we have county chiefs, for example? Where are the services? The LC3 and the district. So now you are creating a county. Now, LC4 these days, is well, it really functioning? Oh. It, it's a service unit. So the members, there's somebody who wants to give you Please, go ahead. While the... The, the honorable member is on the floor and speculating about Koboko and all that. I want him to also look at places like Kotido that have been elevated to municipal status. Is there also some MP that's being favored? 
That's the kind of information I want to him to, to give to the him. house. Okay. Yeah, initia initially, there was, uh, you remember, Honorable uh, Aleper Simon Peter, when he saw the list, Cotido was not there and yet had been promised. There's pressure. Like, for example, even in Moroto, where I come from, the Matheniko County had to be cut so that the people who live up the mountain, the Tepes, are given their own uh, county. So now, these days, if you pronounce the word in a different way, that you speak a different language, you're a different tribe. So now the districts have become tribal. So because you speak a different tribe from this, so there's a tribalization of these constituencies, and I think it is disuniting uh, Uganda more. And whereas we are against tribalism, uh, actually the creation of these counties and districts is, 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 is following the tribal card. So, so, so uh, it definitely do we need these constituencies? Who needs them? Who is benefiting from them? And, and that's where I think uh, where Honorable Sisi Agaba brought out very clearly. One, it, it is aimed to make President Museveni, this is not a speculation, to, to, to wholly take over the 10th parliament. Because if he has got 10 from the army already in the 10th parliament, he has 10 ex officio whom he can appoint. Now, if you add again from the new districts, okay, if you calculate over 60 something already, this is called, uh, uh, what is it called? Gerrymandering. Well, because if I pronounce like this, I need a new district. Because I don't pronounce the way you do. So because I belong to another tribe. <laughs> Imagine this creation is taking place five months to election. Electoral Commission has already finished mapping constituencies. They have even demarcated polling stations. And then you come and destabilize. Are they going back on the road map? Then they're putting them retrospectively first July. You, see, you are passing them in August, but effective <laughs> from first July. So now when you make a law, and make it apply retrospectively. It violates principles of, 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 of natural justice. Okay, well, that For example, you, you say that, uh, I want to, to, to end up maybe on this, that I think creating administrative units with the potential of being a constituency, they should create it, but it should be applicable in 2021 so that you don't legislate for your personal interest. You declare your interest, you are not going to be a beneficiary, but it will be the next parliament which will be a beneficiary. But this one where you legislate, uh, and the law says you create districts or, or constituencies 12 months after UBOS has, made, has, has published its census. Now they wait until five months. UBOS declared these results many years, two years ago, I think, or one year ago. Where were they? Now you wait until you know who's standing there. Who is putting pressure on who they are? It is now, results are now out. So okay. it's not speculation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Member. Um, yes. Oh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Honorable Sisi Kagaba and uh, Honorable Proko for clearly articulating the motive behind the creation of uh, districts and new administrative units at this particular time. The creation of new districts, it's a ploy to create new structures new entities. When we went around the country looking at the various issues that are derailing this country, the people pointed out that the high cost, administrative cost, it is too high for them to bear. And that is why as a country we are continuously having new taxes. And as TDA, we have one of within our agenda, we would like to establish a small and efficient central government and economically viable, devolved regional governments, rather than having these small, small entities that are eating us up as a country. And I believe if all Ugandans could raise and desist the temptation of districts, I know our MPs are misleading the public, they tell them all kinds of things. They are bringing services nearer to the people. But, but I recall... But the people who are demanding for the district. Madam... Pre when the president goes somewhere, they demand for the district. Madam Speaker, when I was growing up, we had very few districts in this country. Much as our history is being rewritten by a regime or by a single individual, I remember we had services. The hospital we called the National Referral Hospital, Mulago Hospital, was a very decent hospital. Not what we see now. Women delivering on the floor. And so each district at that time had a, a district hospital. They had 
a district education officer. They had a secondary school to talk of and a very good primary school. But right now, what we have is simply alarming for this country. And Madam Speaker, I would appeal to all Ugandans, much as they are being woodwinked that they demand, you cannot tell me that we elect sensible <coughs> or educated members of parliament to represent us. And then they say, we who didn't go to school are demanding. What are we demanding? We okay. elected parliamentarians to represent our okay. interests. Okay, Thank well, you, Madam maybe by the time you were growing up, there were a few di districts because there were also few Ugandans, but the population has a bit uh, a grown. Therefore, need for for more districts and, and constituencies. Yes, you are still watching NTV People's Parliament. Ugandans speaking about the creation of more districts and more counties. Is it uh, financially viable for this country? Let's go for a short break, and when we come back, we shall hear more from Ugandans. You are still watching NTV People's <laughs> Parliament discussing the creation of districts and counties. Is it? A financial viable for this country. Honorable Member, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My name is Mwirima James. I'm from Citizens Watch It Uganda, Sewit. And my take on this is I think it's not economically viable to have these districts. And I think Parliament, or indeed people in power, have failed Ugandans in providing leadership. Much as the criteria for creating districts includes, among others, to cater for the demands of their people, but I think it is the role of people in power to provide leadership. And in this case, providing leadership should take into consideration other factors like the cost effectiveness of some of these units. For instance, the reasons they are giving is effective uh, administration. Did we have an effective administration before we created the new districts? They are talking of bringing services closer to the people. Uh, for instance, each district is supposed to have a district hospital. But look at the existing districts. How many of them have anything like a district hospital? Most of them have health center falls, which are even poorly facilitated. No doctors, no drugs, no nothing. <laughs> And we are creating more districts even before we look at the question of service delivery. So which services are we bringing closer to the people? So the reasons are really suspect. And I think the timing itself is suspect. What I would say as a way forward is Ugandans, we should resist some of these new units. They are not viable. I've done a study about local revenue. You're telling Ugandans to resist, but there are the Ugandans who are demanding, like I told you, Honorable. Uh, the Ugandans who are demanding, my fear is, are those who have failed to make it in, in the political game. When they compete and they can't go through, they want a new creation to be made so that they too can access okay. the leadership. Okay, you will be given another opportunity. Thank Honorable you. Member, please. <laughs> go ahead. My name is Muhammad Ibrahim, a local representative from Wabigalo Parish. I'm honored to be with you all today. And the motion on the uh, on the floor is simply creation of new districts. And counties. And counties. I will say no and I'll resist because we are simply encouraging corruption. There is no way you can create a new, dist a new district and you say corruption will be stopped. We are fighting against corruption and fighting against self-enrichment of some political leaders who are actually behind the government or the incumbent we are fighting against all this and you're creating new districts. Who are we putting in that line of benefiting? We are not benefiting as local people, but particular members are doing what? Benefiting. Besides that, there will be congestion in the parliament and wherever we go for discussions. And trust me, we shall not all be given opportunity to discuss. But in most cases, there are no MPs in the parliament. You have already seen MP6. They are empty seats, yes, but then when they bring in that oneness, like they said in the political reforms last time, uh, last week, we talked of seats being full and no people are getting opportunity to discuss. But we are there. Like I was down there 
yearning and crying to stand before here, people to see me discussing all these uh, uh, important points, but we could not get opportunity. So when you bring in more districts, that means you're bringing new leaders, new MPs, new uh, chief administrative office, uh, officers. You're bringing in new LC5s. Where are they going to be getting the funds to fund for all these people or facilitate their being? Besides that, we are looking at hindering of electoral reform, uh, 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 electoral processes. Kigundu is there seated, but whenever they go for elections, they get new counties, new what? So you find rigging going to particular places where we can't even tell. Besides that, infrastructure development is weak. I was in Kole District yesterday, but one. I had an accident, and I'm here standing before you people after an accident, and I have an X-ray in my house. Poor roads, no hospitals, you can't even run anywhere for first aid. So when you create new districts with no leaders, only trees and bananas there, who is going to vote and who is going to cater for who? Why should we create new districts? Let's look at the little we have. We would rather make it a municipality, depend on a particular headquarter and not even a constituency. Why should we have new districts when we can't cater for them? We are simply bringing in unemployment and violence in the country. A district is a consuming entity, and so is a constituency. And therefore, from a business point of view, economically, creation of a new district is not economically viable. <laughs> I would rather agitate and advocate for a creation of a municipality. Because municipalities are engines of growth. When you look at a municipality, it comes along with some specific benefits. I would just spell out one example. Look at if we have a health center three in your or health center four in a municipality, automatically it is elevated to a hospital. And that brings closer services to our people. So there are so many benefits that a municipality will really bring up. So instead of advocating for more constituencies, I would rather advocate for municipalities. Now, Probably, Honorable Madam Speaker, we need pro probably to redefine the role of a member of parliament. Some other people have been looking at new constituencies, new municipalities, you now looking at the size of the parliament here. My thinking is that even 12 members of parliament can able to represent this country in parliament here. <laughs> if we redefine the duty and the role of a member of parliament, number one, as to legislate, debate, and enact laws, look at resource allocation. Is the national cake equitably shared within the country? And probably to effectively represent a constituency. Those are the three major activities of a member of parliament. Now, I would rather simply say that we do not need all these members of parliament. If anything, let's advocate for town councils to retain their status quo, if we feel that the members of parliament would be too many in the house, for the constituencies, let these constituencies retain their status quo. Otherwise, Madam Speaker, I uh, would rather suggest that uh, creation of more districts is not going to benefit us. I've been hearing people talk about creation of jobs. Honorable Madam Speaker, now, look at the population increment. Call it increase. Now people are saying that the reason why we need more constituencies is because the population has risen. But anyway, what is the quality of the population that is rising, ladies and gentlemen? Let's make this reflection and go back home. How many graduates do we have in our villages? What type of the, what quality of the population are we talking about? The diploma holders, senior four leavers, you know, just look at the people we have. So before we think of the size of the parliament and new, create, new constituencies, let's first refocus on that and okay. probably we we'll re-inject this money that we would have spent here okay. in agriculture. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Honourable Member. As you talk about the quality of, of the population, the Deputy Speaker has been on, 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 has really criticised the quality of debate of his members. Mm. And there are just a few members in the House. The debate, the quality of debate is poor. What about more than 400 MPs? What will be the, qu the, the quality of debate? Honorable Member, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, right Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Members, there are times when I look at the flow of trends in my country and I feel like crying. I keep wondering 
who is doing the thinking for us? India, with a population of nearly 1.2 billion people and a per capita of over two trillion dollars. We are here, a population of around 35 million people, a GDP of something like 25 billion dollars. We have a house of three over 375 members of parliament living the ex-officials. India has a house of 769 members of parliament. But now let's even look at the parliament we have. It is a house where you find like 50 members of parliament who debate on the floor of parliament. Absentism is the order of the day. My name is Matanda Baker. I'm representing the people of Bududa. My area member of parliament, when the, when the performance of MPs came out, he had a zero. <laughs> he has never said anything on the floor of parliament. And the same goes for very many of them. Now, at a time when I'm thinking of a situation where we should reduce our parliament, where we should reduce our cabinet, for the record, we have the third largest cabinet in the world. Where the, the, the world is average is 30. Ours here, there are 71. I think that the, very soon we shall be seeing more. So at a time when I was expecting that we are going to move to a situation where we say, no, our parliament is too large. Then I was hearing that we are increasing. And I'm wondering, I don't see anyone who is supporting this. Just look at us here. If I asked who of us here supports the increment of parliament, there is none. So whose interests, whose interests are we looking at in this country? I would propose that instead of having this humongous parliaments where even the parliamentarians themselves do not understand their roles, you, you, you find them pro promising people bridges where there are no rivers, where the parliamentarians don't understand their roles, leave alone the people. Instead of us looking at increasing the parliament, I would propose that we move to a system of quota, whereby we can say we can have 200,000 people represented by one member of parliament. If you look at our population of 35 million people, that would mean we would have a house of around 175 members of parliament. I feel that such a house uh, can be one that is sober. Okay. And by the way, the, the, the last point, fewer people are easier to hold accountable. When you have a large house of over 300 people, they can go and, and run a mock and pass funny things and then point to this one, point to the other one, and before you know it, you have nobody to hold accountable for anything. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Honorable Member. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. I'm Honorable Mastula Nachisos, representing grassroots people from Kawempe Division. I was so shocked to see to read in the new vision of 21st that MPs have approved 19 new constituency municipalities. Mm -hmm. And yet the previous MP has said that they are the ones who approves. For us, people who are not educated, we don't demand for districts and what. Why do you approve such districts? Our priority is in education and health. I will give you an example. Uh, I look behind where my mother comes, that is Kanungu district. You know the percentage we have with HIV people. How many CDV accounts do we have in this country? When you are increasing the districts, you are approving now and then that we should have more districts. You well know that if a person is taking ARV, ARVs, he's supposed to be monitored after every six months to see how, how far is the immunity increasing or decreasing. But people down there are taking ARVs without being tested for CD4 count. And you are there approving districts. I rather say on behalf of grassroots people who are not even educated down there that we need to decrease the number of MPs in the parliament. Because you don't even come back and tell us about the laws. We don't know the laws, we don't know what, you are just there increasing your salaries and what. We rather have 100 MPs. If you don't manage the job, the grass people will take over. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go for a short break. And we, when we come back, we shall have Ugandans suggesting a way forward on what should be done.
you are still watching NTV, People's Parliament discussing the creation of more districts and more counties, having a big size of parliament. I'm one with Muhirwe Florence, uh, representing Fode, but on this note, I want to, to give a case study and then a way forward. Uh, all the way from Kabare, uh, in 2013, 2014, budget, district budget, 67.3% was for salaries and gratuity. You think about 33 now going for social, social services and you expect to get quality services in education, in health, and in production. Now, when they create another district, it means that cake is, will be shared by the three. They are suggesting Rwanda and Ruchiga. Now think uh, about the service delivery that those people will be getting. I would suggest that we call on our legislators that we reduce the number of MPs, we reduce the uh, presidential advisors, we reduce on the cabinet ministers. But who is going to bring these suggestions? Is it parliament? <laughs> there, is a, there, there is a Uganda proverb that says, <laughs> the, the, the man cannot decide the fate of the forest. Yes. So who, who is going to bring these suggestions? But we are the people, the citizens elect the MPs. Mm -hmm. And in our constitution, we can recall members when they don't represent our views. And this is my suggestion, that we hold them accountable, we, we tell them what we feel, and they should represent our concerns. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we don't exercise our roles. Because I have never heard of a community where they say, you have not come back to the constituency, and we are calling you back. Uh, from here, let's sensitize our people that they have their civic roles and they should exercise them so that we hold the leaders accountable and they represent our views. Thank you. Please go ahead, hold Thank you, Madam Speaker. Celestine Mujisha is my name from Citizen Watch It. Madam Speaker, you are much aware uh, as I do as well that we have a provision, a constitutional provision for creation of regional governments which has never been operationalized to this point in Article 178. Madam Speaker, if only Parliament can operationalize this article, it can reduce on the burden of bringing all these MPs to the center. And that can, in essence, give, all, give the people the power and the mandate to work on their services the manner they want them. <coughs> not crying or craving for these constituencies, uh, counties, and districts. One. Two, we need to revisit the, uh, the, the decentralization governance. Initially, when decentralization had started in 1992, 93, 94, that time, people were able to realize the effectiveness of the system. But over time, we are seeing more of centralization than decentralization. That is why people are craving for coming to parliament at the center. That is our districts have been uh, disem disempowered. They are no longer strong enough to do the, the, the work they ordinarily are supposed to do. That's why I'm saying if we only we can really mean the word decentralization and have the monies and the, and the, and the regional tires and the districts empowered, there wouldn't be any cry of services. And, uh, as, as we see today. And lastly, Madam Speaker, we have a problem of uh, timely disbursement of funds to the districts, to the local governments. Therefore, if people are crying of services, they are crying of services because they are disempowered. They don't have the funds to do the work. The, time, the, the funds are sent towards the end of the quarter, and there is a policy in the government that an and a consumed funds be returned to the center. That is co completely disempowering. <coughs> Therefore, can we revise these policy issues and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and the systems for us to have better services than to cry for districts, uh, constituencies, and so forth and so forth. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Please, you have one and a half minutes. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. My name is Honorable Juliet Lutu Barasa.
representing the women of Akiso district. Uh, we are in the so-called urban area, but even then, the services, the programs are not up to date with the standard that we do expect them to be in. So now, when the question of creation of new districts and constituencies comes into play, we the women are still wondering whether we have these programs as effective as they should be and the, and the services are really being delivered to reach the women that we do represent, who are, Madam Speaker, largely illiterate. And our, our, our challenges as the women are not the same as anybody else. They are unique to us. So when we demand for increases in budgets like for health, for agriculture, for education, at the time when the budget is being highly discussed and uh, we are demonstrating as citizens of Uganda, but when the question of constituencies and districts comes up, the people in the finance unit are not critically looking at the budget implications for this and having the power to stop it at that particular moment, then it becomes a question of disservice to the Ugandan woman. Co recalling in 2012, the same argument was brought up for 25 districts. And it, the ministry came up so strongly to say that we do not have funds enough to create these new districts. But three years down the road, at an opportune and strong moment like this, when we're looking towards the next elections, like uh, I recall uh, the, the words of the first uh, speaker, Honorable Prekol from Karamoja, I, uh, pardon me for the, for the name. He said that when this time is the time that is chosen for new districts, it questions the reason for it. I do agree strongly with him because in 2012 it was rejected on budgetary matters. But now, 2013, inflation is increasing, 2015. I mean, look at the cost of fuel. Look at the debates on budgets. Every year, the women, the people of Uganda are coming up to say, Reduce on agriculture. Reduce on this. Reduce on this. And the member wants to give you information. Please. In 2003 2004 financial year, uh, budget, the institution of parliament was given 112 billion. In 2015 2016, it is, it is three and, uh, 360 billion. You can now, God knows the rest. Mm. The next and the salary year. for MPs in the next parliament is likely to be 9 billion per month. When the entire Ministry of Education salary is 10.7 billion a year. Thank you for that information. Please wind thank, up. Thank you so much. And even with that very much information, we shall agree as Ugandans that uh, we need more resources instead to go to the services, but not the administrative okay. units. Okay, Honorable Member, thank you for that contribution. One minute. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'm hoping against all hope that there is someone listening to us, listening to sanity. Because you can hear the plight of Ugandans, you can hear the outcry, people... The whole country, the whole country is both crying. Both in Uganda and diaspora, so and, um, don't mind. <laughs> and I'm hoping that there is a leader who's going to take action after all these discussions. Because we are tired of speaking to ourselves. We are tired of speaking, coming up with solutions, with resolutions, and there's no action taken. Can we have these administrative centers handled as business units, which will be subjected to production uh, variables. My, 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 my counterpart here had already spoken about business. Can they be subjected to um, performance variables like viability before you create a district? Is it economically viable? Will it be efficient? Will it be productive? And is it feasible? for us to have some of these districts. And here I believe that we shall be receiving some investment returns if some of these districts are subjected to some of those performance variables. And another thing, um, can we have government invest more in uh, measuring performance of some of these districts? Before you think of creating new districts, are the ones that are there performing? Are there services? Eh? Can we have uh, investment in monitoring services? Are people actually in offices working? Before you think of creating other new districts, that's another issue. The other thing should also be government should strategically cut on its administrative costs. Someone talked about the numbers of parliament. We, were, we, are, we, 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 we all know the numbers of RDCs that we have. Deputy RDCs, the military, and every... Can we 
have some of these administrative costs cut deliberately. Okay. Thank you. There was an MP who was here who just ran out. We, we are tired of hearing people buying iPads for themselves when there are no drugs in hospitals. Okay. You go to a health center and there, is, there are no drugs. People are delivering on cartouch phones. Okay, eh? thank you. And thank you're talking you. of... Thank, thank you, Honorable. <laughs> just imagine each member receiving a car of 103 million. What would have that done for the, di for, for the hospital in Bududa district? Please go ahead. Thank you very much. The solution is regime change. As for Kasoma Faruk of Uganda, I tell this nation that a, tac a tactician can smile when in the mind is crying. And he can cry when in the mind is smiling. The creation of new district is a creation of President Museven. I was just reading the book of Machiavelli, the prince. Machiavelli is saying, when you, want, you don't want competition at the top, what you have to do is to create so many small posts so that uh, you, you avoid the competition at the top post. So President Museven is a follower of Machiavelli principle where he doesn't want competition at the top. So when you create small districts, someone can be a chairman, an MP somewhere, and is going to be contented. Because in politics, there's what you call the spirit of arrivalism. Someone will feel that I've arrived since I am an, an MP. Okay. Another issue as I'm um, ending in politics, Ugandans should know that one plus one sometimes can mean 11. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. As we wind up, Honorable in, in just uh, two minutes, what, how can we move now? We need to appreciate the fact that probably if the districts are in place, they would have some of the advantages. Because we, we cannot necessarily say that you know, having many of them, it's only disadvantages. But obviously, yes, they do have some of their advantages. Like, you could talk of good governance. You know, it can promote good governance whereby communities are closer to those that answer to them. There the are some of those and bring services closer to the people. But that, again, can only be achieved if you have enough uh, resources. And I disagree with the fact that it's people demand. We tend to give an impression that our government is so feeble, that it is so weak, that it just succumbs to people's demand. I mean, Dabaganda have been asking for federal, even before some of these districts have been created. So we cannot actually continuously say that it's because people are demanding, and when they demand, then government has to give. Dabaganda have demanded, and government has still failed to give them federal. So for me, th those arguments that, that, uh, <laughs> that because people are demanding, so government is so generous, it's giving out the districts, th that it doesn't really hold water. Thank you, Honorable Kagaba. Please, yes. one and a half minutes. One and a half minutes. Yes. The motive, the motive being given is service delivery. But are they giving 40 new hospitals beds? Are they getting 40 new ambulances, 40 vehicles, 40 classrooms, 40 new doctors? No. What are they giving? More MP. Who needs an MP? <laughs> so in the new districts, you have seen that the first thing they do is to build a police station. There is a diso. There is a giso. There is a riso. There is a, a, a piso. There is a HISO, I think, Household Internal Security Officer. <laughs> so so they, they, they build the judiciary. They, they build the courts. <laughs> they build the courts. They build the prisons. So, 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 so those are the, the services they are bringing. So by dividing the country into smaller units, so the dictatorship can now control the people faster. If you want to protest and move from the other part of the district, here, they bring vehicles of the police from all these other new of districts. The and the and Giso and the Diso. I'm telling you, it's different <laughs> services. It is not the real services. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, in one minute, in financial terms, a way forward. In terms of finance as a man. Thank you so fine. much, Honorable Madam Speaker. Uh, the way forward. <laughs> Can we say no more creation of new constituencies for the next 10 years from now? So that we closely monitor the performance of the already existing constituencies and districts. Perhaps should we let alone establish that they have relatively done well, then that can be a basis for the more creation of new districts. Short of that, for the municipalities, I am totally behind the creation of new municipalities because a municipality is an engine for growth. I thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Member. But you should be made aware that all these districts have been approved, a deal done. 
So we are we, we are to cope up with the consequences of the, this new district. Maybe our forward is no creation of more districts, as he has said, and maybe no creation of more counties in the future. But the counties have been created, approved. The districts have been created, approved. So let's cope with the constitution. Thank you for coming to NTV People's Parliament. Thank you for participating, honorable members. Thank you for speaking out as Ugandans. Let me hope the powers that be have heard your voice. I am still Agnes Nandutu, the speaker of NTV People's Parliament. And until, until next time, I add you in this house. The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff.